to tutorial 3, recording a MIDI keyboard in GarageBand on an iMac or MacBook. We'll firstly look at how to plug in the MIDI keyboard to the iMac or MacBook using a USB connection. So what is MIDI? MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. A MIDI representation of a sound includes the pitch, length and volume value. It can also include the attack and decay time of the sound. When you record a sound through a MIDI keyboard, all of the musical elements above are also recorded. This means the data that is recorded as MIDI can be changed after the recording, so if you make a mistake or want to change the rhythm or the sound of what you recorded, you can do this with MIDI. An M Audio Axum 25 keyboard was used in this tutorial. The first thing that you'll need to do is locate the USB cable connection. The USB cable was used to connect the MIDI keyboard to the MacBook computer for this tutorial. The USB cable is usually the power supply to the keyboard, so usually you don't need a power pack to actually power the keyboard. The following plug-in process can also be applied to an iMac computer. When you're connecting the keyboard to the iMac or MacBook, the first step that you should do is locate the USB insert on the keyboard. Step 2. Make sure you have the right end of the USB cable that you're going to plug into the keyboard. And step 3. When you're plugging that cord into the USB insert on the keyboard, make sure you do it gently. Then you need to plug in the other end of the USB cable to the computer USB slot. For step 4, make sure you check the other end of the USB cable fits correctly into the MacBook computer or the iMac computer. So for step 5, make sure you gently insert the USB cable into the USB slot on the iMac computer or the MacBook computer. Never try to force the USB cable into your computer. Always double check that it fits correctly before you put it in. MIDI first appeared in the form of a 5 pin connector over 30 years ago. This connection still can be used, however you would need a MIDI interface that sends the information to the computer through a USB connection. So what I've done here is I've set up a new project and I've changed um, the first track to a Steinway Grand Piano. But if I want a new track, I just go track, new track, and I usually have to select the software instrument where it's got play sounds from your Mac. So that automatically works with your MIDI keyboard that's already connected. So I will click create. And another track should appear on the screen here. If I need to delete it, I can go right click and delete track. And on the left hand side here, I can always change the sound to a completely different sound if I want to. So I've stuck with the Steinway Grand Piano, so we'll just test if it works. And as you can hear and see, the MIDI keyboard that's plugged in works correctly. So if the green lines, the meter comes up on the sound, that means that it definitely works. If my MIDI keyboard isn't working correctly, I can go up to the GarageBand heading up the top and press Preferences. So what I can do is click on Audio MIDI and check that within this, so I'll just quickly click on it. And as you can see, I have system settings already set. I can check the output device and input device are the correct ones. So I usually use system setting, however if it's not working you might be using a different setting. So it's a matter of clicking on either one of those and checking which one works for you. You can reset the MIDI drivers, so you can um, reset the connection if you need, especially if you connect the keyboard in after you've opened up GarageBand. So again, to check your MIDI keyboard settings, go into GarageBand, then Preferences. So what we'll do now is we're going to change the sound just briefly. So let's select Vintage B3 Organ, Tone Wheel Organ, and as you can hear the sound that's coming from my keyboard is different to the piano. So when we want to record, um, we select the instrument we want, um, the sound we want, but we can always change it later if we need. So we're firstly going to change the BPM, so I like to have the BPM 
beats per minute at 100 beats per minute. And we're going to have the count in and metronome on while we record a sample of Twinkle Little Star. So I just press spacebar to stop the recording there. And as you can see, the notes come up in the green loop. So if I make a mistake, I can always go into the loop and edit the notes if I need. So the next thing that I'll do, I'm just going to go back to the beginning. Check the notes are correct if I need. And you can hear there's a slight mistake in there that I can always go in and fix if I need. The next thing I can do after I've recorded that part is change the instrument to another sound if I want. So I can now play that with a different sound if I need to. If I actually record the sound, I can always change it to a different sound when I'm using a MIDI keyboard. So I don't have to stick to the same sound. I can always change it later on if I want or if I'm not happy with it. The next thing I'll quickly show you is how to edit out one wrong note within this part. So I've clicked on the scissor button to bring up the edit screen and I'm just going to scroll to where that wrong note was played. So if I click on it and press delete, I can get rid of the wrong note that I accidentally pressed when I was recording this keyboard part live. So more of these editing techniques um, will be shown in tutorial 5. Um, this is just to give you an idea of how to actually start recording your keyboard part and small edits that you can start to make. So I'm going to change that back to the Steinway Grand Piano sound. So we'll go track, new track, and we're going to leave it on this software instrument setting and go create. So I want to have a guitar sound added now. So if I click on guitar, I'll go acoustic guitar and test that works. I can always change the name if I want but I'll leave it at acoustic guitar for the moment and it's coming through and we're going to record another guitar part. And remembering that if you need to save your file, make sure you go File, Save As. And I'll just call this Twinkle Little Star. And it's important to know where you want to save your file. So if you're using your own computer, I usually save it in GarageBand file. But if you're using a network computer or a school computer, you may need to save it into your documents so it's saved on your student drive. If you don't have a MIDI keyboard that you can connect to your computer, you can go to Window and Show Musical Typing. So what will happen is a keyboard will appear and it will show the um, keyboard notes as the keyboard on your computer screen. You also have the option of using the actual keyboard on a screen instead of musical typing. So if you prefer this option, you can always select that and switch between the keyboard to musical typing within the musical typing window. This now concludes tutorial 3. I hope that this tutorial has helped you gain an understanding of how to connect your MIDI keyboard and how to record your keyboard successfully.